Welcome guys to the start of a new let's play start of a new series as we continue with our dip into the world of Neon Falcom Going a little bit of a different way from the action RPGs of East and going full RPG for the Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky I've been waiting a long time to play this series and in fact my original jumping on point was supposed to be Trails of the Cold Steel Which will be coming out in the future Trails of Cold Steel even not Trails of the Cold Steel but instead, we get to start from the very start as our jumping on point. We're going to be playing the full trilogy and then going on to Trails of Cold Steel as well. So this is going to be an incredibly large undertaking, uh, an interesting go through an entire JRPG as we just continue to fall in love more and more with Neon Falcon as we go. So sit back, relax on what is a first blind playthrough, not following any guides, I will Hit some miserables, I'm sure, but hopefully, may well be lucky as we explore a new world, explore a story that takes place throughout the series on many different continents, all kind of affecting each other over a long time period. We'll see how it unfolds, shall we? We'll see. But, well, when you're gonna start, you're gonna start. And it's best to not talk much more as we find normal and average difficulty for those wanting a little challenge. I like even how the normal mode thinks yeah, you're getting a little challenge. We've got hard or nightmare, it's your funeral. May Adios be with you. I'll definitely play it on nightmare first time. No, we'll play it on normal. Let's get room and let's see what the world has in store. And if it's got a long intro cutscene, I will disappear on the webcam and let you see it in its full beauty. But as I press it, let's go. Daddy's really late. I even got a message from the guild saying he'd be home today, too. And Cher has gone travelling around the kingdom on some kind of training. I'm so bored! Maybe I'll just practice with my staff a little bit more before dinner. Hey, I'm home! Daddy! Sorry to kept you waiting, Estelle. You take good care of the house while I was away. Haha, <laughs> of course I did! Did you run into any trouble, Daddy? You didn't get hurt fighting the bad monsters, did you? Nope, I'm as fit as a fiddle! That reminds me though, I brought you a present. Really? What kind of present? A new fishing pole? Sneakers? Something for my training? Maybe I raised you wrong, Estelle. <laughs> Aren't little girls supposed to like clothes and jewellery? I like pretty clothes, but they just get dirty. And jewellery breaks when you go play outside with it on. Anyway, Daddy, what's with the big blanket? Is that my present? Oh, you're a sharp one. Why don't you come have a look? A boy. What? Well, here you are. Quite a handsome boy, don't you think? What? What? Why is my present a boy? Don't make such a fuss or you'll wake him up. Wake him up? You mean he's still alive? What, do you want a dead boy? Looks kind of dead if you ask me. <laughs> I've treated his wounds, so he should be in a stable condition. In the meantime, however, we'll need to let him rest. I'll put him to bed, so if you wouldn't mind heating a kettle of water on the stove, I'd appreciate it. Okay. He sure sleeps soundly. And he almost looks the same age as me. This is the first time I've ever seen black hair like that too. He certainly does have a nice head of dark hair. And a pair of amber eyes to go with it. Hmm. That's nice and all, but how about you come clean and fess up? Fess up? Yeah, who is this kid anyway? And uh, why is he hurt? Why did you bring him to our house? Is he an illegitimate child or something? Did you betray mummy? Where have you been picking up these kinds of words? No doubt from Sherazard, I assume. Yep, that's right. For heaven's sake, that girl is going to get me into trouble one of these days for all the nonsense. Actually, I just met this boy while I was out on business. And I don't even know his name. Do you mean bracer business? Something like that. Oh, look. Huh? He's waking up. Hmm. Wow, his eyes really are the colour of amber. But where am I? So you're awake now, are you? Welcome to my humble home. You'll be safe here, so please just try to rest. What are you trying to pull? Huh? You must be out of your mind. Why... Why didn't you just leave me there to die? Why? Now that's a question I don't know how to answer. 
Does things just work out that way works for you? D don't toy with me, Cassius Bright. Do you have any idea what you're getting yourself involved in? Hey! You're sure shouting a lot for someone who's supposed to be hurt. Running your mouth like that is just going to make it take longer for your body to heal. And just who are you supposed to be? I'm Estelle. Estelle Bright. She's my daughter. Don't you remember me telling you that I have a daughter your age? Now that you mention it... Wait a minute, don't try and change the sub- Ow! Quit yelling! Alright, alright already! But you jumping on me like that isn't gonna make me heal any faster either. I don't hear you yelling again, do I? Look, jumping on me like that is just gonna make things worse! Do I hear Y-E-L-L-I-N-G? Never mind, just forget it. As a word of advice, it would be wise not to argue with Estelle while you're in this house. Even I wouldn't stand a chance if I made her mad enough. Yeah, I can see that. By the way, aren't you forgetting something? Huh? Your name. You know, that thing that people call you. I told you mine already, so don't you think it would be unfair and impolite not to tell me yours? Um... It seems like the logical thing to do, if you ask me. Trying to hide it now would only serve to your detriment. F fine. My name is... Something we'll have to wait for, as the intro to Trails in the Sky plays.
so much in that intro, I don't even know how to process it. So many people appeared! So many people to meet. Some people consider intros like that to be spoilers. But we'll find out where the story takes us after frying some eggs. Ah, it's so bright in here. Ah, step like a rock. Hmm, that must mean it's Dad's turn to cook this morning. I wonder if that means Joshua's still in bed. Ah, I guess that's a no. Well, I guess I'd better get myself ready then, too. Nice, Joshua. Bravo! Good morning, Estelle. I hope I didn't wake you. Nah, I was all yet when I heard you start to play. I can't believe how awake you are, though. Even the roosters still have bags under their eyes. Not that I mind, what with that siren song of yours gently lulling this beautiful woman from her slumber. What do you mean, woman? At the same age, I'm hardly a man. How wrong you are, Joshua. We may be the same age, but I am clearly the woman of the house. And that makes you something like my loyal follower, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, yeah. How fortunate for you. You can at least try and sound a tiny bit sincere. It really is a nice tune, though. Cheerful, yet somehow wistful. I like your other songs too, of course, but this one's my favourite. Uh, what's it called again? The Whereabouts of Light. That's right, The Whereabouts of Light. I wish I could play the harmonica like you, Joshua. Sadly, it's a lot harder than it looks. Compared to what it takes to use a staff, I think the harmonica is much easier. It really is just a matter of concentration. You're probably right. I guess my problem is just that if I don't do something to use my whole body, I start to feel drowsy. Okay, playing the harmonica is fine and all, but how about getting some exercise too? All your hobbies are sitting around kind of stuff like reading and music. No girl is going to be impressed with just that. Well, excuse me for being so unpopular with the ladies. Although I feel like I should be the one lecturing you about your hobbies. I mean, what kind of a boy wants a girl who loves fishing, collecting bugs, and has a fetish for sports shoes? Uh... That's enough talking about hobbies now. Uh, and for your information, I graduated from bug collecting a long time ago. Really? I'll believe that when I stop finding beetles in the hallway. Hey, Estelle, Joshua. Morning, Dad. Good morning, Dad. Is breakfast ready? It's ready and waiting. Why don't the both of you hurry on down here before it gets cold? Okay, I'm on my way. Thanks for the grubs, Dad. Boy, am I stuffed. Are you eating or inhaling, Estelle? Ha, <laughs> like people say, kids who eat and sleep a lot, grow a lot. Well, make sure you get enough to eat, but don't forget to pull that energy into your work too. That reminds me, you two are finishing up your training at the guild today, aren't you? That's right, it'll be a review of everything we've learned up to this point. And once we're finished, we'll be braces just like you, Dad. That means I'm not going to let you treat me like a kid anymore, either. You still lack understanding, Estelle. You can only become a junior bracer in the beginning, or in other words, a trainee. If you want to be treated like an adult, then you should work extra hard on your training to become a full-fed bracer. Well, I'm not afraid of a little hard work. Just you watch and see what I'm capable of, Dad. I'll be so successful that it won't be long before I pass you too. That's the spirit. Let's see what you're made of then, shall we? Let's not start a rivalry here, you two. And Estelle, keep your focus on the task at hand. We have a test later on today, remember? Huh? Wait, what test? Please tell me you didn't forget about the test, Estelle. You know, the one that checks whether or not we've mastered the skills we've been learning in training? Don't you remember Shara saying that if we failed, we'd be stuck with a ton of extra homework? Crap. Totally forgot. Now that you mention it, I guess I kind of remember her saying something like that. Don't sweat it. I'm sure we'll manage somehow or other. I honestly don't know how you survived this long, Estelle. Your brain is like a sieve. Papa is sad. How could any child of mine end up with such a careless, over-optimistic personality? <laughs> You're the one that raised me, so I definitely got it from you. I swear, the two of you act so much alike, but whatever. We should probably head over to the guild soon, Estelle. Shara's going to be waiting there for us. Sounds like a plan. You know how crazy scary she gets when someone keeps her waiting. Oh, before I forget, it's my turn to cook dinner tonight. 
Is there anything in particular you'd like to eat, Dad? Any requests? Yeah, so what I'd like to eat, huh? How about Rouen style scalloped fish in a balsamic vinegar sauce? What? What's that? I think that's a little more than Estelle's cooking still can handle, or our stomachs. You're right. I just wanted to see what kind of reaction I could get. I'll just have the usual fried fish and omelette. No need for anything fancy, but do try to make something edible. How rude. But I can actually say he's wrong. Actually, I do have one favor to ask you before you head out. I'd like you to pick me up a copy of the Libelle News in the general goods store. They're supposed to be getting the latest edition in today. Got it. One copy of Libelle News from the general goods store. I was about to say, give me the money. <laughs> Received 500 Mira, the currency of this world. If there's any money left over, you can have it as your allowance. However, that means no wasteful spending. Alright, thanks, Dad. Okay, where are I now? See you later, Dad. Work hard and give Sherizard my regards. Alright, I'm not interested in meeting the Sherizard. Wow, I like skate around the place. And so here we go. What? So who's the main character? The mysterious boy? Or the kick-ass girl? Obviously, it's Estelle all the way, right? Thank you for the 20-month sub streak there, Biet. Right, let's get moving. By the way, Dad, is it going to be alright if you stay at home like this instead of going to the guild today? You haven't been there for a couple of days now. Unfortunately, I have a lot of paperwork to sort out. But don't you worry, I'm carrying a big enough workload that the guild's not likely to fire me anytime soon. That's not exactly the most convincing thing I've heard come out of your mouth. Alright, is there anything to just pick up? I like how the talk thing is. It's basically the same as you say, isn't it? Right, let's have a look around, see if there's anything you can actually find this early on. Or we can find ourselves an exit to the house. Right, I like the movement speed. Right, well, also another thing to figure out is to try and figure out the buttons straight off the bat here. So our menu is B, where we have cutaways of several characters by the look of it. There's Joshua. He's a dub dual swordsman by the look of it, by the portrait. And I've always liked the staff. That's what I wanted to train when I did martial arts. So we've got equip, we've got augments. All courts is okay. Time courts only. Oh, okay. Whatever that means. Items, tactics, and more. We've got a Libel Kingdom map. We've got character positioning. And more. Let's uh, maybe look at that a little bit later when we get into the game properly. What are the other buttons doing? So we've got camera rotation. We have a big off-world map. So we want to go to... Where is it? Well, I guess we just head where we're going. To Roland, supposedly. Looks like I have to head down and then upwards on a fork to that. Alright, well. I don't know if there's any treasure just around to get. But let's get on our way. The camera make you throw up, does it? On the Elise Highway. So how do we encounter enemies? Have we got random battles? Have we got enemies on the map? What are we looking for here? North is Roland, 49 Selg. The Golden Gate, 259 Selg South. So, looking at that then. Take that fork and we'll be good. The Bright House is just off its own outside of town. So why is it outside of town exactly? So we enter the city of Roland. We'll have a slow burn for a while, I'm sure. Much story needs to be set. Looks like we made good time. Not too early or too late either. We just barely graduated from Sunday school. I never dreamed we'd have to study so hard to become bracers. Well, you're in luck. Today is our last day of training. Truth be told, though, you're the one who signed up to be a bracer in the first place, so I don't know why you'd expect to get away with any less effort. Oh well, yeah, I guess I did. All right, then. Let's get to it and make it through this last hazing from Shera. You look ready to me. Let's go meet with Shera at the Bracer Guild over there then. Well, I gotta buy a paper too. How do I buy a paper? Oh, we got arms and guards. The general goods store of Renon General Goods. Good morning, Mr. Renon. Hello there, Stellan Joshua. We got rather early today. Did you come to buy a pair of new shoes? Haha, <laughs> the fetish. Now you mention it, are there any new ones in stock? You know, like the newest Streggers? Unbelievable. you actually already forgotten why we came in here to begin with. You're not here to shop. You're supposed to be buying a copy of the Libel News for Dad, right? <laughs> of course. <laughs> You've always been a big collector of those shoes, haven't you, Estelle? I'm afraid the new Stregas aren't out yet. If you're after the latest issue of the Libel News, though, I should have them in around noon. Luna, it's right in the middle of our training at the Guildhouse. We'll stop by again after our training is over. 
Sure, I'll be waiting for you. Can you keep it on reserve, maybe, though? Right, what could we buy? Tear balms? A healing cell formulated by the Septian Church? Balms of various types. Well, we only got 500 in cash, so I guess I don't want to use anything. We got milk as well. We got a cooking system by the look of it. By the look of it. Converting as well here. Trade Sepith for Mira. I feel like I'm diving into things before the game actually tells me what they're doing, really. Morning air, so crisp and fresh. Let's see. It's about time I water my lovely flowers. Just wondered if they had dual conversation dialogue or anything like that. The flowers up here. Balcony flowers. Quite nice. Well, I guess then, if we can't get the label news just yet, then we should head for our hazing. I'm just on my way over to the forest of Mistwald, to the south of here for work. There was a merchant from Bowes who came here to buy lumber. I need to get enough ready for the order I received. Do you need me to go get you lumber or something? What's that quest? Where are these kiddos going? There's the Hotel Relent. I always like it when in-game maps, even on older games, have, like, it shows you what's there beforehand. The Malga Trail is to the left. You know, there's got to be another way here. Can I bring up an internal town map? Pressing buttons, trying to find out. Start button, oh! So the start button on this controller is showing me directions towards actual things. That's nice. What's that? Thank you very much for the follow. And here we go. Pressing back there. Bracer Guild. Oh, the red building. The one we've already walked past. Right. More than one map. More than one way. That's cool, though. This, this little bit here. There you are. Two are. Good morning, Estelle. Good morning, Joshua. Morning, Ina. Good morning. Is Sherry here already? Yes, she's waiting for you upstairs. When you finish today's training, you'll finally be recognized as members of the Bracers Guild. Good luck to the both of you. Thanks. We'll do our best. I'll say, what's all this? Just wondering if there's quest balls or something like that. When you finish today's training, you'll finally be recognized. Oh, you're saying the same thing. Share us waiting for me upstairs. Good luck to the both of us. I'm sure it'll be fine. We only just forgot about the test. It's okay. Star and the Hanged Man. The Hermit and the Magician. And last of all, inversion through the Wheel of Fortune. Ah, this is a difficult combination. How should I interpret this? A bit of tarot, eh? Good morning, Shara. Well, isn't Estelle and Joshua. This is a rare occasion for the both of you to show up so early. Since this is my last day of training, I figured, why not? I'm ready to get the show on the road and become a brace of myself. I'll give you credit for your enthusiasm. But I'm going to work you hard today in every way I can think of to make sure that high-spirited attitude of yours holds up. I hope you're ready. I can feel that enthusiasm dropping already. Quite you. <laughs> every time I teach you something, you somehow manage to forget it. This training is my way of trying to keep some of that information in your head instead of letting it dribble out your ears like it usually does. Ha! Ah, Joshua! Shara's picking on me! Don't worry, Shara. While Estelle may hate studying and rarely ever does her homework, Acts rashly, is overly naive, and has a tendency to stick her nose into everything. Her instincts are sharp, so I'm sure she'll pick up on how to use an orbit with some practice. Eventually. Probably. I guess there's not much I can do now except hope for the best. Hold on a sec, Joshua. Somehow I get the feeling that you weren't standing up for me. Well, that's odd. I'm positive I described all your best traits accurately. Whatever. By the way, Cher, what were you trying to predict with your tarot cards? Your face was really intent. Oh, this? I was just trying to get a vague reading about what might happen in the near future. Unfortunately, I don't seem to have been in the right mindset to interpret the cards correctly. You couldn't read the cards? Now that's surprising to hear. Actually, the more profound the meaning of the cards, the more difficult they become to interpret. But that's not important now. I think it's time we start your final training. I'll give you a brief rundown of all the information we've covered in your previous training. This is the minimal level of knowledge that Bracers should have in order to function effectively. And Estelle, make sure you pay especially close attention to what I'm going to say. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what would you like to know about? Ordnance, Bracers, or Liberal Kingdom? Liberal, Liberal. However we pronounce things, I wish sometimes there was just like little voice files that appear in the game that says Liberal, so you know for definite. <laughs> Orbments are mechanical devices which operate by using what is known as orbital energy. 
A variety of effects can be produced depending on their structure and the type of quartz or process septium installed. Although it's only been about 50 years since their invention, these devices play an integral role in all facets of life, from lights, heaters and other everyday products to weapons, magic and even airships. In connection, this technological reform is commonly known as the Orbal Revolution. Okay, that's interesting. Races are investigative and combat specialists who work to protect civilians and maintain the stability of their respective regions. They aid the community in various ways, such as exterminating monsters, preventing crime, finding lost items, and escorting people and goods. The Bracer Guild, which has established branches across the continent, manages the affairs of the Bracers in each region. What about the Liberal Kingdom, then? The Kingdom of Liberal, in which we live, sits on the western half of the Zemurian continent and abounds with nature and deep-rooted traditions. Liberal is proud to be one of the leading producers of Septium on the continent and is known for its high level of technology used to develop augments. Augment technology has also been a key pillar of support for Liberal in protecting its independence as it has been contended with neighbouring nations. Ten years ago, when Liberal was invaded by the Erebonian Empire, it was the use of orbital powered airships that saved the kingdom from defeat. Consequently, even now, our relationship with the Empire is somewhat sensitive, but thanks to the Queen's political finesse, Lebel enjoys peace. Oh, it's a Zelda game because it looks like there's rupees in the game. <laughs> Wasn't Lebel voice in the Cold Steel games? Aha, but I haven't played them yet. We'll get to them. We'll get to them in time. Well, I guess that's all the information we can pick up at this point. Let's see, since we've got a man and the stuff to do today, I'll let you off the hook this time with a condensed review. I'm going to speed things up now and move on to the practical portion of your training. Uh, Shera, how is today's practical training any different from the training we've done before? Since it's practical, that means you'll be experiencing things firsthand. Therefore, I'm going to have the both of you run through everything as if this were a real racer job. So what you're saying is, there won't be any studying at the desk involved? Yes, it's exactly what I'm saying. This time you'll have to go out and make a physical effort to accomplish your task. I'll make sure to have you work up a sweat, so I hope you're ready. Yes, this is seriously just what the doctor ordered! I didn't know what I was going to do if I had to sit another day with my tush parked at a desk. I guess I got all worried for nothing. Well, suddenly you're all bright and cheerful, Estelle. Let's just hope that smile on your face lasts until the end of today's training. Okay, let's get cracking on your first objective, shall we? Let's have at it! Your first objective will be to confirm the details of the job you'll be performing. But before that, there is something that we need to give to both of you. Aina, are they ready? Yes, they are. Alright, you two. Go get one each for yourselves. I will do indeed after I thank Noble for the 18 months up. Thank you very much. Right, let's get and talk to you a little bit and find out what you're giving me as a gifty. These are very important, so make sure not to lose them. We received a bracer notebook. Oh, I thought that was a bracer and a notebook. This bracer thing is going to be a bit more on me. I keep thinking I'm going to get a wristlet. Bracer notebooks serve as the official way to record the status of your current jobs. Also, anything you may hear or anything you may find and where. These kind of trivial things can often become clues. No matter how insignificant something may seem, always write it down. Understood? Crap, this sounds like it's going to be a pain. Oh? Please tell me it was my ears playing tricks on me, because I swear I only got one response. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there were two. Keeping an accurate account of events is an important duty for all races. So get with the program and stop trying to make this out to be more than it really is, Estelle. Okay, okay, I got it. Make sure you do. Alright then, let's begin. Look over by the door. You can see that there's a bulletin board standing there. First, I want you to go and check the job description posted there. When the bulletin board is approached, an exclamation mark will appear. Pressing the OK button will display the job list. By selecting job names on the list, you can view their details. Well, I guess I'll do that then. Training, retrieval, new. We have client Sherazard. Pay 500 mirror. Details direct requests. This training will involve searching the sewers beneath Rollet and bringing back the contents of a chest. See Sherazard for details. I can just press A. I'm guessing. Oh, we've also got a term. And here we go with a time based side quest. Ah, oh, yeah. Not what I was looking for. <laughs> details of the job confirmed on the bulletin board and other important events will be automatically recorded in the Bracer Notebook. The Bracer Notebook can be easily found by clicking on the Books tab of the Items menu. It can also be accessed by configuring Bracer Book Shortcut button on the Configuration menu. Very good. It looks like you were able to see what was posted without any trouble. Checking the bulletin board is one of the most basic functions a Bracer performs on their job. Checking regularly to see whether or not there are any urgent tasks which need immediate attention is also an important duty for Bracers. Man, all this talk about duty and starting to cramp my style. 
Sure, there are a lot of rules to follow, but there's an equal level of responsibility in the job themselves. I think being an abrasive calls for much more than just someone with a half-hearted attitude. Uh, I guess you're right. I'd have to be more motivated. Hmm, is that so? Had a change of heart, have you? You betcha! Well, before all that motivation sneaks off somewhere, let's get to work on your next task. What will we be doing this time? We'll be heading across the street to Mr. Melder's Orbital Factory and learning how about how to use his services. He has graciously taken time out of his work schedule to explain things, so make sure to be on your best behaviour. Okay! Thank you for the follow there, Rainy, by the way. Here is where you will learn how to use an Orbital Factory services. At an Orbital Factory, you can modify your ornaments and synthesize support courts in order to use Orbital Arts. Arts have a wide range of effects, and if masters can be extremely helpful. The race business is a pretty risky occupation, so the guy, well, the guild, has had a long-standing relationship with these orbital factories. Anyway, this is about as much as I can explain. I'll leave the technical details to the experts. So, Mr. Melders, if you wouldn't mind taking over from here? No problem. Leave everything to me. So, what is it that you would like to know about? Well, tell us more, Mr. Melders. Great name, there. Ormond's serve mechanical devices, which exhibit an array of effects for the installation of various types of courts. By definition, that means that lights, airship engines, and so on are also types of orbits. However, the ones we will be discussing today are battle orbits, which enhance the user's physical abilities and make it possible to use magic. Since each orbit is adjusted to match the owner's personal aptitude, the structures for these devices also differ for each owner. Simply put, the shape of the fixed elemental slots and lines which connect them vary. At any rate, that's the layman's explanation. In order to install courts, you must first have an open slot. By default, the central slot is open, but the other slots must be opened at an orbital factory like this. It'll take a fair amount of sepith, too. EP, which is needed for magic, will also see a max increase according to the number of open slots. I recommend opening them all as soon as possible. So, what is it that you would like to know about? That's interesting that the game says rush that system because there's benefits to it. Simply put, orbital arts are magic which can be discharged exclusively through the use of battle ornaments. In other words, a number of peculiar effects can be produced by using the orbital energy stored within these mechanical devices. Since orbital arts can be a mouthful, they are almost universally referred to as arts. Probably ought to have been called that from the get-go. There are several types of arts, but in order to be able to use them, their corresponding course must first be synthesized at an orbital factory. Ornaments are also set up so that once a particular quartz is installed into a slot, the owner will be able to use his arts. The type of arts can also change depending on, on the elemental value and the combination of installed quartzes. Basically, if you want to use water arts, all you have to do is install quartz for water elemental value. In reality, ornaments are much more complex than what I have described, but I think this information should suffice for now. So what's it you would like to know about? That sounds about the quartz next. Sepif is what we need, though, to be able to open up this stuff in Norba Factory. Quartz are circuits made from Sepif. Quartz have a vast number of effects and raise the owner's abilities while simultaneously making it possible for them to use us. However, you will not be able to harness any of these effects until quartz has been installed into a slot. However, there are also fixed slots in which only a certain type of elemental quartz can be installed. This being the case, when you synthesize a new quartz, be sure to check your orbit and decide where you'll be installing it ahead of time. So, what is it you would like to know about? The Sepif, I guess now. Sepif are fragments of Septium, which are dropped by monsters. They are divided into seven types. Earth, Water, Fire, Wind, Time, Space, and Mirage. Sepif can be exchanged for Mirror almost anywhere, but at the Orbital Factory it can be used to synthesize quartz and to open orbit slots in which to install the synthesized quartz. So what is it that you would like to know about? I think we've learned everything there. It looks like Mr. Meldus has answered all your questions. If there's nothing else, then let's have you both try and use the services here. For that, you're going to need some sepith. Right, we received several of each type of elemental sepith. For that amount, you two should be able to synthesize a few quartz. Now, I want you to begin by first making elemental quartz that will work with each of your particular ornaments. In your case, Estelle, any elemental quartz is okay, but for you, Joshua, it has to be a time elemental quartz. Normally, in a shop, you would be able to exchange sepith for mirror, but for this training, you will not be able to use this service. Upon approaching the counter, a talk mark will appear. Press the OK button, we'll display a list of options. Select Modify or Trade, use the Obol Factory Services. Right, how much Sepith did we get given? Oh, good work so far. If you need to use the Obol Factory, give Freddy Hall over there. Oh, sorry. I thought you were the boss. Right, do we talk? Hello there, looks like you two are doing well in your training. Talking to me. If you'd like to modify your orbits, please select the Modify Trade Service. There's a lot of game systems that we are being introduced to, isn't it? So, we want to make some courts. We obviously need to make a time courts. So, the only one I can make is action one, which increases speed by 10%. So, let's make an action one. And apart from that, we get evade, attack, 
water, well, basically defense increase, max HP increase, strength. Strength up, defense down. That's interesting. Evade. Agility plus one. What shall I have her with? I always like defense over attack, but I feel like attack suits her a bit more. Uh, I guess the whole point is it kind of wants me to do all of them, but let's see. Can I open up any more? Hmm. So these two slots are openable, but it requires 30 of each sepith. That's a shame for everything. Shall I just make one of every quartz so I've got the option? Why not? Let's just get one of everything. We'll get more sepith in time from fighting, obviously. Alright, do you want me to equip it, do you? Right, it looks like you're able to synthesize one. Next, I want you to increase the arts you can use. Now, install the quartz into your ordnance so that you can use both recovery and attack arts. Quartz can be installed in the ordnance screen. The ordnance screen can be utilized by selecting the ordnance tab in the main menu. Sure thing. Right, ordnance. Only a time quartz can go in for you, so we've only got a time one, so there we go. That gives us two orb arts Clock Up and Soul Blur. Alright then, Estelle. I guess it depends on what we're using here to get... Like, what are actually these spells? It seems water comes with more spells, though. Hmm, how do I see the spell itself? Oh, there we go. Ah, so that's the heal. Shoots a heavy stream of water enemies? Okay, so having the heal on earlier, it's not a bad idea. A heal spell, recovery, uses one of them, heal 200 HP for an ally. I guess we're going with water for you rather than attack. For now, anyway. Alright, looks like you've got both recovery and attack art set up. If you balance your arts out between each other like you've done here, it should make dealing with monsters much easier. Additionally, your brace and notebooks contain information about which quartz allows you to use which arts. If you'd like to use more powerful arts, check out the arts and quartz charts in your brace and notebooks and find something that works for you. Alright, our training here is almost finished. Last of all, I'm going to have one of you open a new slot in your ordnance. The more slots you have available to you, the broader range of choices you'll have. Since EP, which is consumed by using arts, can have its max value increased by opening up slots, it would be a good idea to open them all early on. Now, would you use the step if and open a slot on each of your ordnance? Go ahead and decide which slot you're going to open. Right. So we get to just open them now anyway. So it was a good idea that I made several different arts. That's not a bad idea. Right. So he's given me only. Oh, she's given me thirty. So I can only open one person's arts. I guess there's interest in which route I could take. So if I go this route first, it means I can open that one up early and I have to pay less. But all the same, due to the costs of all these orbs, I would obviously do that one, then that one, then that one, then that one, then that one, wouldn't I? Let's do this one first, then. Fortunately, I can't open any for you, so that's a shame. But I can get a different ability on. So you've managed to open up one of your orbs slots, Estelle. Since your central slot is not limited to a particular element, you are free to install any type of course you like. Let's conclude your training here at the Orbital Factory. Now it's time to move on to what you've both been waiting for. The qualification test. Pardon? D did you just say test? You can't honestly tell me that you forgot about the test again, can you? Did I remind you just this morning? <laughs> now you mention it, I vaguely remember some sort of talk along those lines at the breakfast table. Sometimes I fear for the future of the Bracer Guild. And humanity. Oh well, no sense in worrying about that now. Let's head over to the testing area. You mean like now? I don't know if I'm ready for. How about a little less yapping and a little more walking? Dragged by the hair? Joshua, help me! Mr. Meldus, ready. Thank you for your help. Don't mention it. And good luck with that test of yours. We root for you. I'm going to remember that you left me behind all of this, Joshua! All your training has finally come down to this. Your qualification test will begin here. I expect to see you both use what you've learned up to this point. Understood. What's wrong, Estelle? Um, Shara? What now? I was kind of wondering, but is there not going to be a paper test or something? Did Cassius drop you on your head as a child or something? <laughs> Sorry, uh, let's just say the dialogue thus far has been golden. <laughs> you just read what it said on the bulletin board not that long ago, right? Yeah, and... And I even made you chop down what you read in your brace of notebooks, unless you forgot that too. 
I'm pretty sure the job listing mentions searching for and retrieving an item from the sewers. Ringing any bells yet? What a relief! O oh, divine Adius! I give thanks to thee for thy infinite grace in bestowing upon us such wonderful gifts as sewers. So what you're really saying is that you thought it was a paper test? No wonder you're acting all crazy back at the Orbital Factory. Ah, I can already feel the nostalgia. All those horrible days stuck in the classroom are starting to feel like grand memories indeed. I'm really starting to wonder if we'll even be able to graduate at all. What's wrong with you? Why do you have to go and say something like that when I'm trying to reminisce about positive things? Alright, that's enough jabbering you two. This is supposed to be a test, so how about the both of you try to at least look a little anxious? Just so you know though, if you do happen to flunk the test, you don't even want to imagine the kind of homework I have in store for the both of you. Haha, <laughs> we'll be fine! Just tell us what you want us to do and let us loose! Well, if you're so confident then, how about proving that you're not just blowing hot air with the results of your test? Anyway, you both saw on the bulletin board this test will be a search conducted in Roland's sewers. Your objective is to retrieve the contents of a chest which has been placed somewhere within that area. The layout of the sewers is extremely simple, so you don't need to worry about getting lost either. However, there are real living, breathing monsters down there, so if you get careless and let down your guard, you will be sorry. Also, let me give you this before I forget. Alright, tier bound times three, just in case we didn't put the, uh, the water stuff on. Thank you for the follow, Krogan. And we received a monster guide too! What's this book for? It's called a monster guide, and is used to record information about monsters and other opponents you meet. Whenever you figure out an enemy's attribute, you should make an immediate note of it in there. Sounds pretty straightforward to me. He who controls the flow of information controls the tide of battle, right? Ah, Sun Tzu, eh? That's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> You've already got a good head on your shoulder, Sashua. That's pretty useful advice. Thanks for the tip, Shara. We'll put it to good use. Alrighty then. Let's get pumped and knock out this test. Let's. Don't forget, though, this is an exam. We should make sure we treat it as such. Alright, I was about to say, when do I get the option to save? Anytime! Anytime! <laughs> good, good days. Good days to be had. I like this. For some reason, it's also included my playtime on the title screen. How does that work? <laughs> Whatever. Apart from that, we still got one orbant we need to equip to, so let's uh, look what else we can get. So it doesn't look like I'm taking away from anything here. I could get fire as an attack as well. Or we'll just go defensive because, of course, we're healing as well in a respect. Doesn't sound like a bad idea to me. Alright, let's find out how the battles work. On screen enemies! There appears to be a recovery point set up over there. Let's use it for our HP and EP become low before engaging any further battles. Ultimate charging stations are recovery points set up in dangerous areas. As the recovery point is approached, a question mark, exclamation mark, will appear, and two choices will be displayed by pressing the OK button. By selecting the rest option, all HP and EP will be restored. Sounds like a plan to me. Well, everything's already re done. This is rest and leave. What does it do, though? Animation, show me. Wait, it gives us sleep music, basically. I'm interested by the icons down the bottom, by the way. We've got can. We th what does that mean? We've got this weird fist, but we've got a sheep. Does sheep mean there's enemies on screen? Monsters at 12 o'clock. Careful not to let them take advantage of your blind side. Got it. Monsters cannot be seen from far away. They'll become visible as you approach them. The conditions at the start of the battle will change depending on how a monster is engaged. Engaging an enemy from behind is advantageous, while being attacked by an enemy from behind is advantageous. Oh, <laughs> hint. <laughs> Battle order bar. Indicates who attacks first, starts from the top, and moves downwards. Alright, what do I have here? At the moment, I can't art or craft. It's a bit of jazzy music. Right, we're being led through a battle. Attack an enemy. You may use it to move. You may, oh, you may also use it to move if you are using a mouse and click an empty location. Oh, really? The highlight area indicates the distance a character can move. Selecting a target in this area will move the character to attack. When an enemy is out of range, oh, there's actually range mass too. A thingy icon will appear on your cursor. Selecting an out of range target will move the character as close to it as possible, but no attack will be performed. Oh wow, we got movement things as well. Let's beat up this poor guy then. So you can move a little bit further by the look of it. Okay, so now we can't move close enough to it. I'm just wondering, like, is there a point in moving to specific locations then to try and stay away? Oh, okay, and 
A certain someone has a way better movement radius. Alright, we can get in here at least. Alright, so that's not going to result in a KO. We can't get close enough to attack. Maybe I should have waited to get a stealth closer, but we'll take a little bit of damage. We've got the rest point behind us after all. No, none of the enemies are actually going to care to attack us. Go. We'll just get through our tutorial bell. Alright, set Biff and a juicy bone. Alright, so literally we could just go back to here, but it seems they're gaining CP from attacking, right? Here comes some more! Depending on the enemy, some physical attacks may be ineffective. Let's use arts, not physical attacks. Okay. Arts are effective on enemies that are good at avoiding physical attacks. Arts also make long range attacks possible, but they require time to be cast. EP is consumed when arts are used. EP can be recovered by resting in inns, hotels, or by using charge station number items like an EP charge. Arts are effective against foes which are difficult to hit with a weapon, or those on which physical attacks have little effect. It takes time before arts can be cast, also EP is consumed when arts are cast. All arts have an element. Determine the element most effective against your foes and use it. Well, that's interesting then, because I'm guessing then, if EP is art, then CP might be craft points? So you actually have to gain craft points by attacking to spend them? So attack to gain to spend... Interesting system. I guess what we're using then is... I don't know, let's drop a boulder on them. Does it say their elemental efficiency? Oh, it does actually say, but none of them are actually weak stuff. So it takes a little bit to charge a spell, does it? So we've got clock up, speeds up the flow of time, and we've got time, emits this time shaking pulse. That's an attack, is it? Alright, our bug boys aren't attacking to let us tutorialize. It really is just a boulder from above. animations. We got some crisp onions, but I'm not sure we want to eat them from the bugs. So technically we could go back, restore the EP, but I'm pretty sure we're okay to just continue on and see what the next battle thing says. Still, try it. let's try using crafts this time around. Since crafts have other effects besides just dealing out damage, they're worth a shot. Watch of that! Crafts have range limits, but can be utilized instantly. CP is gained by dealing out or receiving damage during battle. So spells have a cast time. Crafts, instant attack. But, of course, you have to attack to gain to then spend. Interesting system. Crafts the character specific skills which not only deal damage, but also have a broad range of effects. Using crafts consume CP. CP is gradually gained by dealing out or receiving damage in battle. You say use a craft, but I don't think we've got anything... Oh, no, we've already been given some craft points. So we can't pummel anyone. We don't have that. We don't have morale. A shout to encourage allies gives extra strength. Well, things rely on debuffs quite a bit. We've got Sever, and we've got Craft Jewel Strike. Basically, two attacks. Oh, some guy actually attacked me! I'm not having that. We should be able to finish things with just normal attacks after all. A sep if we want to get. If we can get up to 30 sep if, that'd be great. Is there going to be another recharge point? Nope. A reviving bum. Alright, I was slightly wondering then if, uh, I might find just a restore point for tutorials again. What a surprise, another creepy thing. Wish there were an easier way to take care of them. One blow using an S-craft or S-break should do the trick for just about any enemy. The catch is our CP has to be at least 100 to pull off one of those moves. Ah, okay. These devastating attacks can only be unleashed with the CP gauge is above 100. S-breaks or actions will allow S-crafts to be immediately unleashed while ignoring the battle order. S-crafts, which are unleashed as S-breaks, can be changed by going to tactics and then set S-break within the main menu. Alright, there's quite a few people here. But we've already got... No, we haven't got 100 yet. I see. So the goal is to get to 100 and then unleash it.
Why are you messing with me like that? Let's just clock up. See what that does. Right, now we've hit 100. These are actions which allow S-Crafts to be immediately unleashed while ignoring the battle order once the CP gauge is reached zero. S-Crafts, Rupert uses S-Brakes can be changed by going to Tactics and then, yep, you said that. Press the, oh, break button. What is the break button to unleash an s break? An s break cannot be unleashed under the closed condition. Now press the break button. I don't know which button that is. And try unleashing s break. If you're using a keyboard, you may use the number one of four keys or the arrow keys selected before unleashing it. I don't know which button it is. Why? That one? That one? No. No. Oh no, which is the break button? I pressed things and it didn't happen. I think it just gave me the tutorial again. And now it's using it. It was just A! I pressed that! Yeah, it takes that enemy out in one shot, that's for sure. Uh, I was thinking that guy probably couldn't reach him. Now, just using something like cock up to speed me up, because that's what it does. Move me up the bar much at all, or not at all, as it turns out. Well, I want to see what his art is at this point, too. So, let's use Soul... No, Soul Blower won't go first. You can actually see where you'll end up on the list here. So can you only do it on not your turn? A bit confused by that, I must say. But this is the learning point, so we'll get it. Let's get you off the combat system, and then I guess it's craft sever. Let's do this. That's that. Well, we asked broke them. Gotta use both of them. That was what the plan was, anyway. Three more juicy bones and a curative horn. Ah, right. Well, one of the easy ways to do this is just to go back to the restore point round now. Now, regain everything we lost and push on just after that. I wasn't exactly sure if that was saying use the con. Like, you can activate it any time, or you still just have to activate it just when that orb says go, basically. My right, door's rusted appears to be locked. Well, maybe it's in that chest there, whatever the key is. Why does something randomly nearby sound like a mobile? And that's the treasure chest we're after. If we make this far, the rest is going to be a piece of cake. Seems like we've got a little breathing room, at least. Let's pay close attention to our battle order this time. There should be a number of ways to get more mileage out of our actions. During battles, there are several bonuses which can be lost to turns. Turn bonuses are the same effect regardless of whether they are locked to an ally or a foe. Using S breaks to ignore the battle order makes it easier to jump in and strip an enemy of their turn bonus. What? Oh god, that's a lot of enemies. These icons indicate the bonuses are locked to the battle order. If a bonus icon appears next to a character's icon, they will receive that bonus. Right, so... Ah, here we go. It's just giving us icons. So basically, they're going to get Sepif up. So I'm going to get Sepif up by looking at it. Heal up, Sepif up, ECC indicate the effects of each action. Okay. So by the look of it then, I kind of just want to kill one guy. And just lower the amount of guys there. Ah, it's the guy in the back that's going first? Oh, that's a bit of a nightmare. So we're already told to use spells on these kind of guys. But it does put us a bit long in the order. We'll see if this is going to go terribly or not. So that guy's not moving. He got Sepif up. We're just getting knocked around the place at the moment. Oh, wow. Quite a bit of victimization there, I'd have to say. Well, that takes two enemies out of the turn order list. So when it says Sepif up, does that mean that if I kill someone on this turn... I get the good stuff? 
So I can't really knock anyone else out of this. But if I quickly hit this guy twice, that'll take him off and lowers one more threat. That one's not even going to bother coming near me. Why is it not showing you more turns past the next point? Hmm. I can both strength, but not really much else. So I just normal attack? I'm expecting you to attack. No, you attack me again. That's fine. I get to attack here. You say step it up, but that's really going to help me. Just channel a tear, which seems to come off a little bit faster than other things, so that's cool. So I don't get CP for that. I wanted to move a little bit further, though, honest. Be nice if he walked my way. Kind of interesting that we've got like the whole movement system too. I mean, I could have gone for a spell from range there, but I was wondering if this guy would even move. Answer to that is a big no. Ah, HP heal. And he even gave more than the 10 it said. Now that was a bit of an experience game, but still no level ups yet. But I think I've got enough, at least, Earth Sipith to unlock a thing. A key. Found a small box times two. Ah, that's weird. There's a couple of boxes inside the treasure chest. That there's not just one, but two. It's kind of interesting too. What else inside? Remember, Estelle, our mission is to search and retrieve only. I'm pretty sure looking inside these boxes doesn't fall under our mission objective. You no fun at all, Joshua. There's nothing to do with our mission. It's what I like to call good, honest curiosity. You know, we're the only ones down here. We can get away with a teensy wincy peek, right? If you feel like flunking today's test, then by all means, be my guest. Did you, just say, did you just say the F word? Yep, opening one of those boxes could result in an automatic fail for both of us. If this were a real job, the contents of those boxes would belong to the clients. And as long as they were nothing illegal, we would have no right to open them. I know, you're right, Joshua, but I just can't help myself. If you absolutely have to know what's inside, why not ask Miss Cheryl when we get back? But for now, we need to focus on getting out of here. Alright, alright. So that was our goal, was it? By looking inside this chest again, you flunk. Just kidding. What? It was just an exclamation point. Don't fail me out because I looked at exclamation mark. Mean game is mean. Failing me out. <laughs> if Paper Mario taught you anything, it's that let's never be. I wonder if we can ever go further in this sewer then, considering it's got a great here and all. And it's locked. It's not just a grate. It is a door. Looks like we'll be coming back to it at some point, doesn't it? Well, job done. Good work, you two. As a rule of training, I'm going to need to confirm the items in your possession. We handed over two small boxes. Yep, they're the real deal, all right. I don't see any evidence of tampering either. That was a close one. I figured she would try and set us up like that. Congratulations to both of you. You have successfully passed your qualification test. You didn't really think something that simple would be a problem for us, did you? So, uh, Shera, what's in those boxes you had us get? That's for me to know and you to find out. After your training is finished. That's enough chit-chat for now, so let's get back to work. You two still have some things left to do. Seriously? Can you just say that we passed the test? You just have to learn about how to report the results of your work. And whether you're both tired, but this is no time to show your duties. Let's get back to the guild. When is this day going to be over? Oh well, no sense of giving up when the finish line is in sight. Agreed. It seems like we've been reaching distance of our goal. Your final training is how to report to the guild. Whenever you finish your job, it is your duty to report the results of your work to the guild. Reporting how you resolve the situation, the steps you look to get there, are all part of your job as a bracer. You can report your results to the front desk in each guild branch. As you already know by now, Aina is in charge here at the Roland branch. In addition, this is where you repay for your work. I look forward to seeing great things for the both of you. Now that we're here, why don't you both go ahead and report the results of today's training? Upon approaching the counter, a talk man will appear. Press the OK button, we'll display a list of options. Select report to report to the guild. Sure thing, I said, bought that paper yet, though. Right, see payment for training and retrieval. We're junior bracer ninth class, are we? We even gained a BP. 
Current rank is Junior Brace's ninth class. Good job, you two. It seems like you were able to complete your objective without running into any major problems. Another thing to take note of is that depending on how you handle a job, you may see an increase or decrease in the amount of pay you receive. When you report the results of your work to the guild, pay in the form of mirror isn't the only thing you will receive. You will also accumulate points which are known as BP, Bracer points. BP are an indication of your achievements as a Bracer. When these points exceed a certain value, you will advance in rank as a Bracer and be awarded with a piece of special equipment by the guild. The ranks of a Junior Bracer start at 9 and go all the way up to 1. Please set your sights on making first rank and work hard. The amount of mirror and BP you receive will also be recorded in your Bracer notebook, so please have a look sometime later on. All that's left to do now is finalise your training. Let's head back upstairs, shall we? I'll talk to you later, Anna. I'm sorry about putting more work on your plate today than usual. Don't worry about it. Training new braces is important for the future of the guild. I fully intend to work these two to the bone in any case. T to the b b bone? And knowing Shara, it'll involve the whip. Will it? Let me say it again. Good work, you two. You've now officially completed the entire training course. From now on, you'll be learning from your own real-world experience. Well then. Sherazard holds out two small boxes. And those boxes the ones? In answer to your question, yes, these are the boxes you retrieved during today's test. You seem awfully curious to find out what's inside, Estelle. Are you saying it's okay if we open them? That's right. Why don't the both of you have a look and see what's inside? Sweet! Alright, let's have a look. Estelle and Joshua open the boxes. And as we've seen, the Junior Bracer Emblem. Th this crest is... So does this mean that we're... <clears throat> Estelle Bright, Joshua Bright. Beginning this day at 1500 hours, you are both hereby appointed as Junior Bracers within the Bracer Guild. From here on, you will work as members of the Bracer Guild to support the livelihood of those around you, defend peace, and uphold justice. Congratulations, you two, and welcome into the fold. Do you hear that, Joshua? You've become members of the Bracer Guild! So I'm a Bracer now, huh? I think the realisation is only now just beginning to sink in. Come on, Joshua! You should be jumping for joy or running around screaming at the top of your lungs like this! Look at us now, world! We did it! I was happy until you made my eardrums bleed. I hate to interrupt the celebrations, Estelle, but I need to take off now. I have some backed up work that needs my immediate attention. We understand. You have to be spending a lot of extra hours working with us during this busy time for the guild. Before you head out, Cher, I just want to say thanks. Likewise, I appreciate all the trouble you've gone through for us, Cher. Don't mention it. Training new recruits is one of Brace's many duties. Believe it or not, I was once in your shoes a long time ago when your father, Cassius, trained me. So that's why I have so much respect for my dad, huh? There's actually much more to it than that, but I'll save that conversation for another day. As for both of you, work hard to become full-fledged bracers early on so you can help guide those new recruits who came after yourselves. And in time, I hope to see you both become respectable bracers like your father. Anyway, I'll leave you with that thought. Um, I just don't get it. Get what? This is Sherazad, aka the Silver Streak, one of the most skilled young bracers we're talking about. So why is it that she holds Dad in such high esteem? He just seems like nothing more than a no good middle aged man who was always out doing who knows what instead of being a father. A no good middle aged man, huh? From your viewpoint, it doesn't come as a surprise that you esteem in that fashion. Huh? Never mind. Let's hurry and head home. We should let Dad know that we qualified as junior bracers. Right! Should indeed.